Hey everyone, my name is Lyndon. I'm glad to be back with you for another action VFX tutorial. So as, as visual effects artists, we're always fighting for realism and, and details really help out with that. So you'll see in these um, action VFX ground burst elements, we have a lot of control over the detail. And that's because they're EXR files, which means they contain multiple passes. Okay, this is, this is important information. Let me show you what I mean by that. So there's a depth pass, which, which is essential for selling realistic 3D compositing. There's a normal pass, which allows you to extract different lighting directions, basically, and two other passes that allow you to isolate the ground around the edges and also the ground under all the debris. So, and, and then, of course, there's the regular RGBA pass, which is uh, called the beauty pass. By the way, I want to remind you guys to subscribe for more free visual effects tutorials, keep your skills sharp, and also leave a like if you find something in this tutorial helpful. Okay, so we have this lightning effect here, and we want to composite this lightning effect inside of these ground crack debris. Not behind, not in front, but inside. So you can see here that this lightning layer is completely covering the ground cracks and what we're going to do to fix this, we're going to keep the lightning layer on top of the ground cracks but what we're going to do is mat out where the ground cracks are so that way you'll be able to see through the lightning and you'll see the ground cracks and it'll look like the ground cracks are in front of the lightning layer even though the lightning layer is still on top of the ground cracks. So hopefully that makes sense so far but here's the key part. What we want to do is only make this lightning layer not visible where the close ground cracks are, or the, or the ground debris that are closer to the camera, because, see these debris in the back here, we want the lightning to be covering those, but not covering the closer debris. So how do we make this lightning look like it's composited inside the ground cracks by making covering the far away debris, but being invisible where the closer debris are, giving the illusion that it's behind those closer debris. So I really want you guys to understand the purpose of what we're doing. What we're going to do is mat out where the close debris are. So let me show you like this, right? So it's not, so it is visible where the far ground cracks are, but it's not visible where the close ground cracks are. So have a look. All right, so that's what we're going to learn. How do we accomplish this effect? Well, the key is using the depth pass inside this ground burst EXR file. So what we can do is copy this ground burst file. The visibility is off. We can go inside this lightning composition, which is where the spell hit and the lightning is. And what we'll do is just paste that ground burst file. Now the key to extracting all the different passes, the depth pass, the normal pass, all that stuff we talked about is the extractor effect. So let's type it in here, extractor, and we'll apply this to the ground burst layer. What we'll do is click right here, and then we'll go to layers and we'll choose depth. For the red, green, and blue channel, we're going to just choose depth.z, so depth.z, depth.z, that's good, hit OK. And uh, everything turns white, but we got to adjust the black point, white points. So let's turn this to something like 2, this one to 20. So if, if, so if anyone was confused, you can see now that we have a luminance difference in the parts of the footage that are far away versus the parts that are up close. And what we can do is contrast that difference with a levels effect. So we can apply a levels effect here, and you can see how we're creating a mat here that we'll be able to use to uh, mat out parts of this lightning effect. So there's kind of a problem here. We have this black thing here in the background, and this is kind of f confusing for me to work with at first. I wasn't sure how to fix this problem, but what we have to do is apply a solid composite before the levels effect. That's important. So after we do that, it gets rid of the most of the black. And then if we check unmold here, problem solved. So we can adjust the contrast here. And what we can do to change the, the threshold depth is uh, use an exposure effect. So apply exposure. We'll, we'll do it before the levels. And uh, we can just change this exposure value here to change the depth. So I think that's pretty cool. We'll do it right here in the middle. And uh, we're basically finished. What we have to do now is go to the blending mode of this ground burst. And uh, we're going to subtract the black part from the lightning and spell hits. So let's choose here Stencil Luma. And you can see that mats out where there's black. And to get rid of this bottom part here, I can just make a new solid. Um, apply a mask to the solid. And then for this, I'll do Silhouette Alpha. By the way, using these options here are a really cool technique for matting out different parts of your comp. That should come in handy. So there we go, depth. Let's go back to our composition. Let's see the composite there. We have the lightning on top of the ground cracks because of the glow. We want the glow to be kind of light wrapping around the different debris. So that's how you use the depth pass. So the next pass we're going to cover is called the normal pass. And we use this to add this relight on the, <clears throat> on the side of these different debris here. You can see the lightning's coming from this side. And we have the lighting here on the right. So you can see that's pretty cool how we have control over that detail. So let me show you guys quickly how to extract the normal pass information. So we're using the extractor effect again. Let's click here. And for layers, we'll just choose in for normal. And let's hit OK, see what we have. So basically the red is the size that are facing towards the right. And the green is the size that are facing up. 
So we want the side that's facing right. So what we're going to do is click here again. We're going to make all, the red, green, and blue the normal X. Because X is the horizontal axis. So we'll go to green, choose normal X. Go to blue, choose normal X. Hit OK. And that's exactly what we want. We can go to the blending mode and screen this onto the original element. This also allows us to adjust the look of the texture as well. Kind of more of a metal feel here. More of a dry concrete feel here. And to make it blue in this case, we just added a tint effect and take the white color and make this more blue. And so because we're in 32 bits per channel, we can have some strange color issues here like it's adding yellow color. Well, that's because there's information that's outside of the realms of 0% black and 100% white. So to fix this, what I like to do is just add a levels effect. And we have the option here to clip the black and white. So turn the clipping on and that keeps the values between 0% black and 100% white. I hope that information comes in handy if you run into this problem with other projects. So that is how you extract the normal path. Also something I think is really cool, something you can do, is mix the normal X pass and the normal Y pass. To basically like make a new pass where the two intersect. Let me show you what I mean. So what we can do is just go ahead and extract the X normal pass. I'll hit normal, normal X, normal X, normal X. So I'll just name this X and we can also extract the Y normal pass. So I'll duplicate that call it Y, then extract the Y normal pass. So I just want where these two passes intersect. We have the Y normal pass and the X normal pass. I want it where the two intersect. So I'll put the Y uh, below the X, then I'll hit Luma Mat, like that. And you can see we have a cool specular-like pass that differs a bit from the X normal pass or the Y normal pass. And uh, let's, you can see here, if we just composite this onto our uh, ground burst you see we can kind of have some specular also remember to add levels for that clipping there we go so this could definitely come in handy so guys we have two more passes we'll cover these really quickly we can isolate th this the ground around the edges here and we can also access the ground under all these debris so let's go ahead and extract the edges real hasty like we're going to use the extractor effect and uh, this time for layers we'll choose ID out Hit OK, see what happens. So we have different colors here. And basically, whatever color you change all these to is what it will extract. So we want this red here. So we'll change all these options to ID out red because we want the red part. So ID out red, ID out red. There we go. So now we extracted this edge. And one, and one thing that might come in handy um, when doing this is just to kind of tank down the opacity of this edge here um, so it blends in with the, the ground in your shot better. So how we can do that is add a solid composite effect, turn this to black, and I'm going to check unmold as well. And then what I'll do is go to the blending mode and choose Silhouette Luma. That'll take away most of it. We can see we have problems here around the edge, and what we can do is just apply a curves to the ground pass. And let's just lift up the brightness here so it takes away that edge. Then I can take down the opacity of this to make the effect less harsh, and then because of the 32 bits per channel, we also want to add levels and add that clipping so we don't have any strange things going on here. So let's turn on clipping. So this will help the element blend into your ground. So let's go ahead and cover the last pass. So this is one super easy. We're going to isolate the ground under all of the debris. So extractor. Or click here. We'll going to choose layers, ground, ID out. Hit OK. You can see here it's green. But what we can do is we change all these to um, ground, ID out, green. That's going to turn white because red, blue, and green together make white. So you can see here we've isolated the ground under all the debris and what we can actually do like in my case I use this to add burn marks down there so like you know the lightning had more effect on the environment it burnt the ground down there. So let me show you guys real quick. I drag some burn mark elements down here. You can actually get these burn mark elements free from actionvfx.com. Another treat, lots of treats. Let's just scale this down a little bit. And uh, basically I only want this to exist where the ground extraction is. Put it below the extraction and do Luma Mat. It's cool that we have that flexibility and control like that. Alright guys, so that's it for this tutorial. Hope you had a great time. Remember to subscribe and please drop off a like. My name is Lyndon for Action VFX and until next time, I'll leave you to it.